to the museum. Before we start our tour, remember that you should not separate from the group. Is that clear? The tour starts as they pass by every room. Julian was amazed with what she is seeing, so she didn't notice that she was left by the group and she goes the other way. Wow, this is so amazing! But wait, why are the lights turning off? Because she was so overwhelmed, she didn't notice that the museum is going to close and when she arrived at the main door, she found out that it is really close. Maybe there are guards here. I should find them. So, she walked and walked and walked until she got tired and... Where are the guards? I tried to look for them all over the place and I found no one. Hmm... I guess I should enjoy my stay here and roam around, then find those guards that are nowhere to be found. She walked towards the room that is close to her. Maybe I should start from here. It says that this is mathematics section. I wonder what's inside. Then she opened the door with giant Hira as its label. Oh my god, what's happening? Hi there, pretty lady. Come in. May I know what your name is? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I am Al Khwarizmi, a Muslim mathematician and astronomer. I introduce Hindu Arabic numerals and the concept of algebra into European mathematics. Oh, you're so brilliant. Can you teach me how to write Hindu Arabic numerals? Sure, why not? Come here and I'll show you how. The Hindu Arabic numeral system named after the Hindus who may have invented it and after the Arabs who transmitted it to Western Europe. Muslims dominated the field of mathematics for most of the Middle Ages and part of the Renaissance. The use of mathematics is directly tied to several important duties in Islam. Math is used to calculate zakah or the poor due. It's used to determine shares of inheritance and for the Islamic calendar. The contributions of Muslim mathematicians have a direct impact on how each of us uses math today. Long ago, numbers were represented by letters or symbols which made calculations cumbersome. Muslims discovered a numeral system which was used by people in ancient India. After making some modifications to this system, Muslims adopted it and later introduced it to the world. The number of angles in each numeral determined its value. With an efficient numeric system in their hands, Muslims made the science of math flourish. The complex system of inheritance in Islam was simplified when the celebrated scholar Al-Khwarezmi introduced the world to algebra in the 9th century. Muslims were also the first to develop trigonometry. A scholar by the name of Al-Kashani invented the decimal fraction and the first calculating machine. He also solved the binomial theorem 200 years before Sir Isaac Newton. In Muslim history, there are no less than 34 scholars who guided the development of mathematics for five centuries. Then, the great Arab mathematician Al-Khwarizmi introduced the Hindu Arabic numerals 0 through 9 into North America and Europe and created new procedures for computation. These algorithms could be written onto paper. Over the centuries, learning the algorithms became the hallmark of an education as students were taught to compute long columns of figures, borrow and carry, and do long division efficiently and reliably. They could now keep records of these procedures and check results. Hi there, pretty lady. I'm Li Hui. I'm one of the greatest mathematicians in ancient China. I edited and published a book with solutions to mathematical problems presented in the famous Chinese book of mathematics known as the nine chapters on the mathematical art. What about nine chapters on the mathematical art? Come here and let me introduce you to the early mathematics in China walks to Chinese era room. Chinese societies used an abacus with a system based on tens, although it had no zero. An early form of decimal fractions came from the abacus. For example, three-fifths would be six out of ten on an abacus. The Chinese lovingly named the numerator the sum and the denominator the month. Wow! You are so great! 
Now, can you show me how to write numbers way back then? Of course. Here, let's move to this end. It was seen from the encryption that the number system which was used to express all numerical information was based on a decimal system. The number used were both additive and multiplicative. Another reason why we find was very important, it showed that the Chinese were the first to use the number system that used symbol based on decimal system and they are employed on a positional value system. Hi Lu, seems like you have a friend here. Ah, what is your name little girl? Jillian sir. Oh, she's Jillian and I'm just telling her our mathematics way back then. Ah, maybe you want to visit the corner so I can tell you our own version of mathematics. Yeah, sure. I'm really glad to. Further, mathematical work is found in the Surba Sutras of the latter Vedic period, the earliest of which is thought to have been written around 800 BC and the last around 200 BC. I will now move on from this slightly clouded chronological discussion. It is however worth Noting that there are serious underlying problems with the chronology of early Indian mathematics, which requires significant attention. I thought Pythagoras is the one who really discovered it. Anyways, how about your numbers? How do you write it? Does your form of writing of numbers different from Chinese? Of course it is really different. Let's go to this side. Numbers, we use them everywhere, and the information they provide about our world is vital. It's hard to imagine, but the numbers we use today haven't been around forever. Our number system began a long way from our shores in India. in central India, the first traces of our numerals were found. They were written more than 2,000 years ago by mathematicians who followed the Hindu religion. They are quite different from the numerals we write today, and while there are numerals for 1 to 9, there's no zero. Over time, the numerals changed to look more like they do now, and a zero was introduced. From India, the Hindu numerals were picked up by Arab travellers. That's why we call our number system Hindu Arabic. The Hindu Arabic numerals spread throughout Europe and continued to change. Okay, okay, knowledge overload. I got to learn so many things from you and Luwai. As we journey through the rich and vibrant history of mathematics, we can see how ideas and creations grew out of our very human need to solve the problems in our everyday lives. Through time, the mathematical explorations of men and women from around the globe have given us fascinating lenses that help us to mathematically view and make sense of our worlds. Can you excuse me for a while? I'll just go to the comfort room. Yes, your excuse. Jillian goes to comfort room, and when she came out, she saw the tour guide. There you are, little girl. I told you not to part ways from us, right? You silly. Come on, let's continue touring around. Confused, but she still join and go with the tour. As they reached the mathematics section, she saw Louis Uis and bowed high and winked at her. <laughs> 